Good morning. Good to see you this morning on the uh, Republican Hour with Charlie Copeland. And I'm here with a friend of mine, uh, Gregory Coverdale, who's going to be running for uh, state representative uh, here just, uh, just south of the city and in the parts of the city. Uh, and I wanted to, you to get a chance to, to, to meet him. So, Greg, pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, um, you know, this is an introductory session. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Greg Coverdale. I'm a certified financial planner. I uh, have my own practice as Civitas Partners. Um, a native of Wilmington, Delaware. I grew up in, in Dunleith, uh, right uh, in the Newcastle County area. And um, I graduated Delaware State University. I graduated in 1999. Um, took up uh, business administration. Currently studying for my MBA uh, four classes away. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I have two beautiful children. My son Benjamin is, uh, he'll be nine, September 22nd, so has a birthday coming up. My daughter, Anna, uh, just turned six. So um, that, that's, that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, well that's great. So um, I've actually known you for, oh, it's gotta be close to a decade. Yeah. Um, you know, you've come to some uh, Republican conventions, you've been to some other meetings, you've sort of, uh, uh, expressed an interest for for a long, long time. What uh, what sort of spurred you to say, you know, I I, I ought to run? Well, you know, I, I, you look around the city, and uh, the, the, the uh, there's not a lot of economic growth. Um, things have seemed to um, um, go from bad to worse. You know, the quality of living has has gone down uh, significantly. Um, and uh, you know, that, that's one of the things that really, that really concerns me. Um, education uh, here in the city, our, our schools, um, could, could be doing a lot, a lot better. Um, so that, that's another concern that I have. So th th there's economic growth, uh, education. You know, I'd love to see um, the, you know, some of the violence and, and, and crime go down. And I, I think somebody needs to stand up and make a difference. And why not be me? Well, <laughs> and why not? Um, you know, uh, I've come on this show for six years or so now and, and said things like, you know, the best person to take care of me is me, but I need an education and I need a job opportunity. Um, you've obviously gone out, uh, worked hard, came from local community, went to local schools, um, and, uh, and sort of followed a professional track. Right. Um, and yet, your your roots really are sort of that Dunleith area. I mean, I guess your 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 grandmother um, moved in there, or what? What's that? Well, it, it's funny because I, I was actually born in in Jefferson Farms, believe it or not, which is also in, in the district. And um, my 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 mother moved back home with with her parents um, shortly after I was born, and, and um, my grandparents lived in Dunleith. So we, we moved into Dunleith, uh, there were the, the four of us there. Um, my, my father actually moved from Jefferson Farms into Oakmont, which is yeah, like, yeah. Uh, adjacent to Dunleith. So um, born and raised in Dunleith, um, went back and forth from Dunleith to Oakmont. And my, when my dad moved out of Dunleith, he moved to Garfield Park, which is, <laughs> which is up the street and around the corner. But um, my, a little bit about my family history, my, my grandparents actually grew up in the Hillcastle area. Oh, no kidding. Um, mm -hmm. And my great-grandfather owned Johnson's Market, which is on the corner of 48 and Brackenville Road, what it used to be. Now yeah. there's a big Walgreens there now. And, uh, and he was a business owner, uh, um, and, and he was a Republican. So, um, you know, he kind of did for himself, and uh, he did very well for himself and for the, you know his family and the community. Um, and and I like to, you know, think that I take after him. So. That's that's a great great backstory because you know one of the questions obviously, uh, I think you're going to get asked, uh, and 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 honestly I'd ask it is you know you're a Republican, right? Uh, which you know historically is not unusual uh, in the African American community. Correct. Uh, and sort of. Uh, I guess Franklin Roosevelt, but really once the civil rights era hit in the 60s with uh, John Kennedy and, and, and some of the Voting Rights Acts and things like that, large portions of, the, of, uh, of African Americans nationwide uh, became Democrats. Uh, although Martin Luther King was a Republican. Um, but um, um, so you sort of pin that back on, on your grandfather and his background as a, as a small business owner. 
Correct. Yes, a a absolutely, absolutely. He, you know, he was one. He was very hardworking. Got up every day. Um, you know, went to work. He served the, the, the community, the people in the community, and uh, he relied on himself. You know, and, and uh, I've always admired that about him, and, uh, and, and you know, he's inspired me mm -hmm. throughout my life since you know a little boy. And uh, so you've been in, involved, you know, a little bit politically, but really, uh, you know, you started a family and, and have moved your business career along, and you've reached a point where you said, gee, the issues facing the, the community around the city of Wilmington, the state of Delaware, and the country maybe need a different uh, different view. I mean, is that sort of a, uh, where, where are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, and, and a little bit more about, you know, my, my professional background. I. Um, you know, after I graduated Delaware State University, I, I was recruited to uh, American Express Financial Advisors. And um, at, at American Express, I, I studied to get my Series 7, but I worked at First USA Bank to pay for all of my classes and so forth, uh, so on and so forth, to, uh, to become licensed. Um, once I got licensed, I was recruited over to uh, Morgan Stanley in, uh, in, in the Greenville office. I did my training in, in two world trade uh, up in uh, oh, in New York, up in yeah. New York, up in New York City, uh, and then I came back and I worked in in, uh, in Greenville in the Greenville office. There uh, I was there for about a year and a half, and then I moved over to uh, TD Waterhouse, and I, and I was a financial advisor. I worked with a lot of individuals. Um, uh, it was more; uh, it, it wasn't a full service position, so I didn't have as much. Uh, leeway as I like, so I, I had an opportunity to work at Merrill Lynch, and, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I spent seven years, five months at, at Merrill Lynch before I branched out and I started my own company. Um, so my background is is finance, <clears throat> and uh, you know, and, and looking at things from the lens of uh, of, of economics and, and finance and, and things of that nature. Uh, I really like to see a lot more growth in the city from an economic standpoint. Um, and, and I really haven't seen that. Um, what I have seen, uh, you know, I've seen taxes, uh, property taxes increase, um, which have um, taken money out of constituents sure. and, and taxpayers' pockets, and also investors who would invest in, in real estate in the city, you know, it hurts their profit margins. Which then leads to vacant housing and, and things like that. Um, you know, one of the big pushes that the, the governor made this year was a gasoline tax. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you are making $30,000, $35,000 a year, throwing 10 cents a gallon on top of gasoline is a big, it's a big nut. I mean, that's a lot to, and there's another way to get at replenishing the money in the Transportation Trust Fund. You know, one of the things that, that you know, I've heard before is that, uh, you know, you have a lot of folks in the city who have gotten a, a, an awful education. Mm -hmm. and things like the Chrysler plant and the GM plant and some of the blue collar jobs have gone away. And so you have these folks out there that, that are hard working people, uh, they want to take care of themselves and they're stuck. And Republicans often get branded with, well, you just want to you know, you know, kick poor people on the street or kick grandma down the stairs. I mean, what would, you, what would be your response to something like that? Well, I, I would agree. I think um, um, there are a lot of, of opportunities that have been um, removed from uh, the state in terms of, of the Chrysler plant closing, of the, uh, the General Motors plant closing. When I was at Merrill Lynch um, as a financial advisor, we, we managed um, uh, the, uh, the Chrysler 401k plan. So when those folks retired, you know, I, was able, I was able to help them uh, live off of what they had accumulated for the rest of their life. Right. It's a great thing. And, yeah. uh, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, um, you know, so that, that not only generated revenue for them, but it also generated revenue for me as a financial advisor right. as well. So when that, <clears throat> when that plant closed, um, it not only hurt uh, the, the people that, that had the jobs there, it hurt the, the, the tax base down there, it hurt the businesses down there, that, um, uh, that, those, that the folks that worked at the plant would frequent after the, you know, before, during, you know, their lunch and, sure. and after they got off work. But, um, you, you know, I, I think, uh, um, there are, you know, there's several things that, that can be done to, um, to, to uh, you know, help the community. Good. All right. Well, um, I've appreciated the opportunity sure. to sort of introduce you to, to, to some folks who might not have, uh, despite the fact that you come from the community, you've 
born and raised here. There may be one viewer out there that doesn't know uh, Gregory Coverdale, and, and now they do. Right. Uh, so I appreciate it very much. I really Pleasure. Do. Pleasure so much. Thanks. Thanks for having me.